want you to show me how to get to know someone like you, someone like you. I want you to know me. Luca just made the most important purchase of his life. Yeah. <laughs> he always loses sunglasses, and so you got. I found this one, 10 bucks. $10 <laughs> sunglasses. Try them on. Always lose them. Like so. There's no point for me to buy nice sunglasses because I lose them. So? They're not bad. I think they're really good. Yeah. For 10 bucks. For 10 bucks, yeah. It's perfect. There you go. Oh, I'm really happy. degustazione alle 5. Ah, fantastico, puoi parcheggiare qui. Grazie. I just feel bad about leaving all this wine here. I, mean, yeah, I feel like we, we uh, should finish it. Actually, the real tasting, you're supposed to spit the wine out. Oh, really? Yeah. But you know, I'm it's not our case. It. <laughs> this is so I want a little bit more. to dinner at the Grotto Il Grotto, Il Grotto. Uh, Grotta La Grotta. I can Grotta never Palazzo. remember Palazzo. but I feel like we already ate we already drank so this is gonna be our second dinner of the night you guys this winery if you ever come to Puglia you have to come visit this place it was so beautiful and so intimate we did wine tasting in Napa in California it was beautiful and amazing as well but this was very different it was much more homey you know the food oh my gosh the food I don't want to say that the food was better than the wine but the food was really good, the food was really good. <laughs> it was really good now since we're on our way to dinner I have to change my shoes it's a little bit too much leg <laughs> La Grotta. <laughs> no, he's telling me no. The name of the restaurant is Grotta Palazzese. On a scale of one to ten, it was a six, seven. I was gonna say six and a half to seven for the food. The food was really nothing special. No. It wasn't. No. And we were told that. We were told that it wasn't gonna be like super great food. The view is beautiful. If you go, just keep that in mind. That the dinner might not blow you away, yeah. but the location is beautiful. I do think a once in a lifetime totally. like thing, yes, I would totally. do it. We'll probably end up going back again just because we probably have like friends and family that we'll end up bringing. So like we probably will go back again, but just saying like in general, in terms of us recommending it, if you want to go like once, yes, more than that, not necessary.
Beach time. So what is your final grade for Borgo Ignazia? <laughs> uh, probably 9 and I'm not giving you a 10 because we just did one extra day. Yeah, but that's our fault. That's not their yeah. fault. So I've been getting a lot of DMs asking me about this place and saying that it looks like it would be a great wedding venue or a great honeymoon destination. And I 100% agree. It's modeled after an ancient town. It's just, it's beautiful highly recommend I feel like we didn't get to fully experience everything that they had to offer because it's so huge and there's so much to do and we only had what two days there two nights, yeah. two nights. so if you go here spend at least four days at least would yeah, you three say nights. Three, three nights, nights three minimum nights. Yeah. minimum like if you want to stay for five nights I feel like that would be the limit I feel like three to five nights and it's just absolutely beautiful. What I like about this area is that there's so many places nearby that you could go to. So if you do stay for like five nights, it's not like you're only stuck here and there's nothing else to do. There's so many different towns that you could go to that are like a one hour drive, more or less, right? Even less. Definitely highly recommend. I would give it like a 9.5 out of 10. I high love, I, it's it's high, awesome. it's high for me. I really, really loved it. here almost but Google Maps doesn't take us to the hotel they had to send us like a PDF that shows us where to go and we are trying to get there this is like Game of Thrones huh? Facciamo il check-in? Facciamo il check-in intanto? Sì, 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 sì. Salve, sono Marienta, piacere. Allora, questa è una chiesa rupestre del 1200. Questa grotta infatti era parte di un monastero benedettino. La chiesa fu poi sconsacrata... La chiesa fu poi sconsacrata nel XVII secolo e questa grotta venne adibita a normale abitazione privata. E I sassi di Matera erano la città di Matera dall'età preistorica fino agli anni 50, quindi tutti gli abitanti di Matera vivevano in grotta. Si viveva in 10-15 persone tutti insieme nello stesso spazio, talvolta spesso anche con gli animali. Infatti nel nostro caso la zona dell'altare diventa proprio la stalla per gli animali, mentre il confessionale diventa il letamaio. Oh. Quindi le condizioni letamaio. è... Well, well, number two. Oh, one. Okay. Uh. Quindi, diciamo che le condizioni igieniche erano piuttosto right. drammatiche, right. anche perché gli animali erano asini, maiali, galline, quindi eh, la condizione era abbastanza um, pessima, ragion per cui Matera venne definita da Togliatti prima e da De Gasperi poi la vergogna nazionale d'Italia. Oh. Eh, anche perché negli ultimi 100 anni c'erano 15.000 persone che vivevano in queste condizioni, in quest'area. Ah, quindi, sì, esatto. Quindi, proprio nel 52 De Gasperi dichiarò l'emergenza, quindi fece una legge nazionale per lo sgombero forzato dei sassi. Solo a fine anni 80 si è iniziati a riscoprire questa zona, e infatti, Matera diventerà poi nel 1993 patrimonio dell'UNESCO. Sì, 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 E in fondo abbiamo la vasca, questa zona era la cantina che era la più fresca. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. This is insane. Nothing like I've ever seen before. 
So there are no lights because it's all <laughs> candlelight. <laughs> You guys, I'm obsessed with bathtubs, so I'm really excited about that bathtub. <laughs> I Cold. <laughs> I just can't see anything. I mean, either I can see anything, especially the water coming from outside. Yeah, exactly. It's a very convenient and, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, pocket friendly thing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still having trouble? <laughs> traveling in Puglia or in South Italy you have to take trains very south there are really not fast trains past Napoli uh, the trains get you know a little slower the fast train in Italy is called Freccia Rossa, Freccia Rossa yes. <laughs> and it is the most like efficient train it's the fastest train but it only goes as south as Naples yes. so North of Naples, you can take this train. So Rome, to and Florence, to Milan, to Venice. Um, and it's really fast, but the trains are south of Naples are a little slower. They're and called so either Freccia Argento or Freccia, Freccia Bianca. Yeah. Depending on where you need to go, sometimes there is not even a Freccia train, which is the stick, the fast, the considered like a faster train, a more direct train. There are regional trains, and those are like, uh, I would really say, slow. rent a car instead of uh, uh, getting a regional train. Yeah. So we even still rented a car because we drove from Matera to Alberobello to Polignano. And there is no other way to get to Matera but with a car, by the way. Yeah, so, so you definitely need to rent a car. How would you say the process is for renting a car here? No, it's fine. There are international companies. Yeah, like Hertz, so Enterprise. Heavy, so yeah, so you're, you're gonna be fine, you know, renting yeah. a car. It just, you know, uh, definitely uh, it's, it's a little different driving. It's, yes. it's, you know, the, the streets are definitely more narrow. Yeah, I think people usually people have a lot of fun Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, definitely Google Maps. <laughs> and so you yes. need a good um, signal, which here in Italy do not rely on Wi-Fi. They're going to be disappointed. Even at really nice hotels, like the Wi-Fi is not great. We did get like a Wi-Fi hotspot from Hertz and it worked really well. It worked there were well, yeah. definitely some areas that we didn't have any signal, but overall it really helped us a lot with being able to have a connection and use Google Maps and stuff. So I think if you stay for more than one week, then you should get an Italian SIM card. Yeah. Which I is agree. like probably I would say thirty or forty bucks, but you get yeah. like, you get you like three gigs Italian of the internet. Service, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's definitely worth it if you stay more than a week.